Jesus just gave me this revelation and I want to share it before it goes out of my head. God revealed to me that we shouldn't fear the coming darkness. Not like the world feel, fears it. For too long, the church has been cringing about the coming dark, darkness and fighting about losing our rights, our freedoms, and worrying about it like the world worries about it. Instead of worrying about what cannot be changed, because Revelation and the rest of the Word of God says that the enemy is going to take over the earth. That everyone on earth is going to follow the evil one. Everyone whose name is not written on the forehead, whose name of God is not written on the forehead. In other words, everyone who is not a Christian, who is not bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, will follow the evil one. That can't be changed. So stop focusing on what can't be changed. We need to focus on what we can change. We can change the lives of those around us by being a beacon of hope. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Then he said, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he said, now you are the light of the world because I go to the Father and the world sees me no more. You see, the darker the darkness becomes, the brighter our light will shine. The darkness can never overcome the light of God, period. So we shouldn't fret about our constitution of freedoms being taken away or our right to practice our religion being taken away, our faith, not religion, I hate that word, our faith being taken away. See, Jesus didn't die so that we could have an easy life. Jesus didn't die so we could have a constitution. Jesus died so we could be the righteousness of God on the earth. Jesus died so we can be vessels of righteousness, vessels of his light and of his love, that we could be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. This is not our home, folks. As Jacob said so eloquently back in the days, he said, the days of my pilgrimage have been 100 and some odd years. We're just pilgrims here. We're ambassadors to whatever country we were born in from a foreign land. And our foreign land is heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. We're just alone here on the earth. We look for a city whose builder and maker is God, the new Jerusalem. We have become too comfortable here, church. We've become too mired in the clay and in the mud and the muck of mankind and all its concerns. We have forgotten that we don't belong here. We're not of the world. So we shouldn't be concerned about the things that the world is concerned about. We shouldn't be concerned about the things of this life, but in the life to come. Yes, we would love to see righteousness done on this earth as long as possible. Who wouldn't? And yes, we should fight for those who can't defend themselves. Yes, those are good and noble causes. But we can't get so caught up in our good and noble causes that we make an idol of them because then that becomes sin. As we learned many times, and as Pastor Jim pointed out on Sunday, sin is an archery term. It means to miss the mark, to miss the target, to fall short of the target. You see, if we become so evangelized in stopping whatever cause you want to stop, whether it's the pro-life movement, which I'm not against, I am pro-life, or the adoption rights, or whatever you want to put there, you become so radical and so evangelized in that cause that that becomes your idol. Now you have sinned against God. Yes, we should be on the side of life, and that's good, and that's noble. I'm not knocking that. But let's remember, in the end of the day, we're supposed to be lights and beacons. You want to stop abortion? Change people's desire to have one. Give them a better option. 
you know? What I'm saying is, our job is to be lights in the darkness. Our job is to be ambassadors of Christ. Our job is not to push our agenda. Our job is not to push what we think is good and right. Our job is not to put what we think above what God says. Our job is not to say that our opinion is better or more valid than anybody else's opinion. Our job is not to promote our own agenda, our own causes, our own whatever. Our job is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. To proclaim the everlasting gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ, of his death, burial, and resurrection, of how they can have newness of life, of how they can be a new creation, how they can be restored to righteousness, right standing with God. That is our business. God, Jesus, gave us the great commission. Go forth into all the earth and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is our primary purpose. Paul the Apostle says, Those who run a race, they untangle themselves from the affairs of this life. They discipline their bodies. We need to discipline ourselves to be still before our great and gentle shepherd and hear his voice. Because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they will by no means follow the voice of strangers because they do not know his voice. It's time we stop putting our own agendas and our own desires and our own comfort above being lights in the darkness. We should be asking for persecution. We should be embracing the coming darkness. Now, I'm not saying rooting for the enemy. No, we don't want to root for the enemy. Of course not. But we should embrace it as an opportunity for our light to shine. For our light to so shine before all men that they may see it and glorify our Father who is in heaven. We shouldn't be wringing our hands and going, Oh no, oh no, our rights are being taken away and all this other stuff and all these wars and rumors and wars. <laughs> no. God said, don't do that. Jesus said, don't, don't be dismayed by these things. Instead, rejoice. Look up for your redemption comes nigh. All these things must happen. And these are just the beginning of sorrows, the beginning of the birth pains. But you have to remember, all this is about the revelation of Jesus Christ. The darker the darkness gets, the more the devil thinks he's got the victory. <laughs> the more the prince of power of the air thinks he has the upper hand, the more Christ is going to reveal himself on the earth. Until the day of his final appearing, which he appears like lightning from the east to the west, and all the nations of the earth will behold him, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him even those who pierced him. That is a great thing. You see, we the church has feared the darkness for too long. The church has held on to its comfort zone. And we love to hear sermons about how God will bless us, and there's nothing we've given up in this life, then we won't receive a hundredfold. And God will bless us with every need. Yes, that's true. But Jesus said, and with them persecutions. Because the more our light shines, the more the enemy's going to hate us. And the more the citizens of the kingdom of Babylon are going to despise us, the more the people who hate the truth are going to hate us. And sadly, the ones that will hate us who shine in the darkness the most are those who have a name they're alive, but they are dead. The self-righteous religious church that claim they are Christians but are not, but are a synagogue that is church of Satan, who have a form of godliness but deny its power. The unsaved, the vast amount of them, are looking, are like Pontius Pilate. They're looking for truth, saying, what is truth? Where is truth? We want truth. They just want to find truth somewhere. But the pharmaceutical church, the self-righteous, arrogant pseudo-church, 
fake church. They're not interested in righteousness. They're not interested in the truth. They want to promote their own agenda. They have been taken captive by the devil. Some unaware, some completely and totally aware, and they don't care. They seared their conscience with a hot iron. They were never of us. They're wolves in sheep's clothing, seeking to destroy and devour anyone they can. They will hate us most of all. Because all they care about is power. Just like the Pharisees that were in authority in Jesus' day, all they care about is power and staying in power. They are no different than politicians who only want to get reelected and stay in power. They are children of the devil, and they will be revealed for what they are in their own time. As Jesus said, let these people alone. They're blind guides. Leading the blind, they'll fall, both fall into the ditch. Their own folly will be revealed in its own season. But we are to be ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We are to let our light shine in the darkness. We shouldn't be embracing the darkness. The greater the darkness comes, the greater we should shine. The greater the hate around us, the greater we should respond in love. The greater the hate around us, the greater we should love. The greater those who want to destroy, the more we should be creating an atmosphere of peace. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Not the peacekeepers. The peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. We should be making peace when everyone else is making war. Instead of holding up our Bible saying, God destroy our enemies! We should be loving our enemies. Doing good to those who hate us and praying for those who abuse us and mistreat us. We should be doing the opposite of what the world says we should do. In any church that's preaching, we should be doing what the world is doing. The same church and preacher is an antichrist, a liar, and a false teacher, a false prophet, a false apostle, and a false evangelist. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. And those who want to be greatest in my kingdom must be the servant of all. The opposite of what the world does. So we shouldn't be fretting. We shouldn't be trying to hold on to what we think we have with a death grip. We should release it to God. And say, if this has to be removed so revival can come, then let it be removed. Every Christian should be saying, search me and know me. Search my heart, God, oh God, and know me. See if there be any wicked way in me and consume it. Till only you remain. Take away all my idols and everything in me that offends you. So that I can shine as a pure light into the darkness. You see, the greater the darkness is in the world, the greater we see ourselves as well. Because there's the brighter and brighter the light of Christ shines through us. <laughs> It also reveals that in us that needs to be consumed by the Holy Spirit's fire. And that can only be a good thing. Because if we're faithful and just to confess our sins, He is not only faithful and just to forgive us our sins, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then we shine as the noonday sun. So remove the tares from our heart and burn them with fire. So that only the wheat, that is the good fruit of the Spirit, remains. And then we'll shine even brighter than we ever did before. No matter how dark the darkness gets. Remember, the coming darkness that everyone's afraid of, including the church, is not about the enemy winning, or even the, the revealing of the Antichrist. The one that break the, the one that breaks the camel's back. Even now many Antichrists have come, but there is one, the last one. That is worse than them all. It's not about his revelation at all. To so stop worrying about who it is and when he's coming. What it's about is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ revealing himself first through the church. And then on the day of his glorious appearing. So look up. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Because our redemption comes not. Let he who has an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Blessings, my friends.